Hi, welcome back to my channel, Display of Color, I'm Scarlett, and I'm going to be doing a chameleon with a bunch of different um, textures. So I'm going to be using this really cool product called Fiber Paste, it's a golden product, and it contains mineral fibers, not paper fibers, which have a higher archival quality, uh, but it acts and mimics a paper type of product so like uh, watercolor or you know kind of paper so you're able you can watercolor on them you can copy an image on them with a printer and color them or color printer have a colored image print on onto it you can collage with it you could do whatever we want you can make any surface um, usable as far as a watercolor you can draw on top of it and um, you can use inks and uh, paints and just, you know, it's really universal and really, really amazing. And basically this allows you, uh, those watercolorists to be able to use, for example, this MDF board that I'm using. I'm able to watercolor on it with this product as well as I'm going to use a watercolor ground by Daniel Smith. And this one's going to be gold. Um, so basically all I'm doing is putting down the vibra paste and I'm setting it down in the center and just making the texture and design that I want to have across. And um, I know I'm going to put my chameleon in the dead, like center of that. And so I use it for like the background, the fiber paste for the background um, that I'm going to be uh, watercoloring with acrylic inks. I know that sounds odd, but basically I'm just using the acrylic inks and water and painting them on. This takes, it's a good 24 hours to dry, depending on how thick of a layer you do and the temperatures, um, you know, the elements of where you live uh, can maybe possibly vary, but I, I wouldn't say any more than 72 hours. Uh, so I just let mine dry for like 72 full hours because there were a couple spots that I I did uh, put a little thickness to, and um, I just wanted to make sure that it was extra dry all the way through, especially because there's been a lot of humidity where I live, so. And I'm just simply using a spatula. Uh, this is a very fast forwarded video. Um, projects I tend to do uh, have multiple layers to them and they do take a lot of time. So I speed it up so that way you can still see my entire process, but it's not going to be like forever. <laughs> so um, forgive the fast movements if you don't like that of, the, of my arms or whatever, but that's why. So this is the ground, watercolor ground. It's actually grounded, but it's liquid. And basically you can put this also on any kind of surface. And as long as you have, um, like texture to the backside of whatever you're doing, let's say if you put this on glass or plastic or acrylic, it will turn your surface into, um, it allowing it to be use watercolor on it so but you would have to like scuff up like sand you know to create tooth um, before you lay this down so I'm just using a watercolor brush and I am painting it on and then there just happened to be kind of a lot of streaks as you'll see then I was just kind of at first it wasn't it wasn't and then it just started to I don't know get kind of stringy and I was like that's weird so I ended up getting a roller a really f fine roller and doing rolling over the bottom which made it also a little bit thicker but this gold is very gold <laughs> and very shiny and metallic and it just doesn't show up the way it shows up in real life but it's like it's very um it's beautiful actually really rich gold and it looks more yellow gold here but it's more of like a ancient coin kind of gold like a I don't know warm gold it's really pretty actually very very intense
you can see the light area, you know, um, where my lighting kind of hits the reflection on it just right, especially on the top part. So that's what you could tell. Um, what I'm using right now is a heavy gel medium. And uh, it's to, I'm using it as a, like a glue basically. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 3D uh, stone balls that I have a, a large and medium size for the textures. I used to own two panther chameleons and they're amazing and insanely colored and this chameleon is the color of all the colors that my other chameleon was um and um and he was just gorgeous and there are panther chameleons are from madagascar so they're very 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 colorful pretty much any animal from madagascar seems to be very vibrant and colorful and so um chameleons they change color but if you look really closely at their skin they have a bunch of different sizes but really tiny like circles all on on the skin and those individual circles are kind of like if you think of it structured cells that can control and change in contrast with color you have your base of the color that's your chameleon and with every shed you know um, as they start to grow from baby to juvenile to adult they um they come out with new colors as their core color but when they actually go on to something then they can blend in with the background of their environment but they have a base color and the base color are is the colors that you see in here I have it was like fuchsias and lavenders and purples and turquoises and teals and whites and reds and oranges and yellows and like a lime green he was gorgeous and the males are the more colorful of the species more intensely colored so I'm placing in various spots um, these stones to mimic that um, you know this is just my you know abstract art kind of uh, interpretation of of that chameleon so you know he's on the uh, holding onto a leaf so, and that, again, I will use some more texture paste to make that 3D and pop. So, even though it's, you know, those circles are, if you look at this again closely, are on the entire body of a chameleon. I just wanted, I just wanted some hints. I just wanted to heighten some textures and some spots. I didn't want it all over. Um, I, I think it would be really cool to do that, but I just didn't have enough material to do that. And these are really hard. These 3D stones are, come from like Europe or something. They're really, really hard to find and expensive. Um, so I didn't, you know, want to just use them all um, in one project. And um, as you see on that shot, it was like I highlight, I gloss over with that gold on the tips of all the fiber paste. And those tips, they do fill and look like, like paper. They do have a texture feel of it. It's, it's actually quite rough feeling um, as far as like the flattened part. And these are my inks that I'm going to be using to do this background with. And right here, what I'm doing is I'm just putting water down, just lubing it up where I want my inks to flow. And then I'll be grabbing those four sets of inks. So it's like blues. Um, I believe it was Prussian blue. And uh, Payne's gray for sure. And or I want to say red earth or something like that. You can, you can always pause and read the labels of the inks and I believe I use marine blue as well and the green I forget what the green was called which is very beautiful you know I wanted a an elegance to it and I wanted it to kind of pop but be in the background I didn't want it to you know overtake the chameleon needed to be the main focus so I chose hues that were beautiful that would 
enhance the chameleon but not like steal the show type thing. <laughs> but what I was going to say is if you wanted to make your texture paste smooth, like like um, if you are wanting to use it as a watercolor paper substitute type thing on something else other than like actual or even a canvas itself other than watercolor paper, then um, you can wet your spatula as you're putting it on and it will um, just just dip it don't you know the spatula plane by itself like metal spatula or whatever you're using and just so it's wet and then just lightly glide over it and it'll be smooth and really flattened because basically whatever you leave the paste as that's the texture it's gonna stay it's gonna be solid and it's opaque it's not like a a paste where it's like um like a gel medium, you know, where it goes clear or whatever. So as I'm doing this, I am trying to dry a little bit just because, you know, the dripping and stuff, I want some intensity to it. But I am also like dip, drip, like the drips that are falling down. I'm just kind of mopping up every now and then with my paper towel. And I'm using, you know, my water brushes like my water quills and stuff like that so um I was a little concerned because it is really really rough um like I said I wasn't expecting it to be as rough as it was but at the same time I also paint with my watercolor brushes on really rough paper as well so it was about equal to that So I try to focus on also like getting in the crevices to help uh, that depth sound out of the different texture layered upon texture to show where it is. And then I go over, you could still see the gold coming through by the way of um, that light wash that I did of where it like stuck and hung out and above um, from the board. So uh, it was really quite beautiful. But I decided to go over it again with um, more on the dryer and like slowly just to get those tips and edges just to help it like stand out a little bit more with the gold highlighting. Um, and then with the darker colors, I would go, you know, where the lines were and crevices and let it bleed in. And right here I've just been scrubbing off by using a paper towel and just plain water and uh, removing and lifting the watercolor that went down so that it's more like a wash, a really, really light wash and the more prominent um, rich of the color colors of the paint is on the fiber paste. So on the top and the bottom, I'm just going over and, and like lifting the inks. And the cool thing about acrylic ink is that it you, with water, you can paint like a watercolor with it, right? But um, once it dries, it's like an acrylic paint. It's no different. It's set. So you can't reactivate it with water. So it's really neat because then you can go and relayer and not have to worry about your underneath or you know it reactivating and and um blending or anything like that so there's some really cool beautiful uses to being able to paint like a watercolor and have those blends and bleeds and blooms but um when you want to do your next layer or next coat you don't have to worry about it reactivating or any of like this um or mixing of colors that you don't want so you can really take advantage of that um, and I didn't want it to just overshadow and overrun, uh, and it'd be too busy. So that's why I chose to, you know, fade the underneath and the above, um, of where the middle of that fiber paste was and just keep the fiber paste to be the f focal point. And then these are all the inks. Again, you can always pause. Um, I made sure all the names were showing but of just that I use just for the chameleon itself. Um, and then, yeah, the entire chameleon. So 
So where the board is prepped that doesn't have any fiber paste um, in between the gaps or any of the gold um, watercolor ground, it basically kind of acts like a resist the board itself where it beads up and it the water uh, the acrylic ink just kind of doesn't want to stick or stay so there are some parts um throughout the chameleon and the plant area um that were kind of difficult to uh get the color on there and to stain enough to where um, and I ran into this problem with the other chameleon I painted with acrylic inks and um, it, it was a very laborious process because I was so time consuming uh, because I had to basically create a, a stain and a texture just by you know keep applying and keep applying a wash to build so that way it would finally stop like pooling and beading and it would just like you know, be enough to like kind of hold it and stick. So that's kind of what I had to do on these parts. Unfortunately, I had done that other chameleon first. Um, so when I went to do this and that happened, it was like I was already prepared and knew how to kind of handle it. So it made it a little bit easier. I'm just being mindful of not too rough going over the beads of you know the stones the 3d ball stones um, so that way you know they don't you know we're scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing eventually it'll like loosen them probably <laughs> if it's not like seriously coated in that uh, glue down so I'm just adding all the oranges and the reds and you know and I keep reapplying blues and greens and fuchsias and like yellows and I have some um, of the purples but it is very rainbow um, my my male chameleon's name was uh, Puntenza Chialarco and it means mighty rainbow and he was, he was just like a very strong rainbow, but he was very gentle. They're just quite gentle and sweet. And inks are very concentrated and very, very fluid. So they are in the sense of like a watercolor. When you, if you've ever used watercolor paint, a little goes a huge way. And so that's what's great too is like they, they last for a long time because of that you have a bottle forever. <laughs> so, um, They're just fun. It's fun to use different mediums differently, you know, than what you're the norm or always the same way or something. So I like how universal I like having products of my mediums that are fluid that have universal builds to them. So for example, if I wanted to, you know, paint this straight, just the ink without using watercolor, then I can. If I want to make this an alcohol ink, um, with the acrylic inks, I can. I have plenty of videos. You can look those up as well. Um, so, you know, inks are really, really fun. Uh, there's totally all sorts of different things you can do with them. And these are just a handful of few that I have on my channel. But um, and they come with a ton of, ton of colors. And I just love the vibrancy of them and the fluidity of them. And how they blend but if I wanted to do this let's say solid without using watercolor and just paint with them the inks and then I want to actually do a watercolor wash on top or whatever um, it won't reactivate right so I can use both mediums if I wanted to and it wouldn't one wouldn't affect the other same if you wanted to like mix some alcohol inking in it or whatever 
so it's really neat I highly recommend trying them So the eye was a slight bit of a challenge. Um, I basically, I painted it again. Um, there's parts where there's the fiber paste texture and then there's parts where there's just the board. And there's obviously no gold because the chameleon's there. So of the watercolor ground. So there's no way for it to allow me to use it like a watercolor. So it's resisted. So I have to keep, you know, going over, going over, going over, letting it dry, going over. So, um, you know, kind of like doing a dab scenario to make it stick. And so I'm just coloring my fiber paste again. I'm going to be doing the leaves with the fiber paste. And um, I'm using basic paints that you saw as well as, um, I think one's a Winsor & Newton and I forget the the pink one, what the pink one, the Vermilions of Windsor Newton, I believe. So I just put a little bit of paint in there and, and then I mix it and, and it, you know, basically kind of tense it, I would say. I, um, I don't think you could put like a ton, a ton of paint in there to make it so-called darker. I think it's just going to tent it. I think if you put too much paint ratio to your paste it might affect it of how it performs or how it dries or whatever so I don't know I wouldn't I wouldn't get too crazy but it's it's more like a pastel tint as well you know what it does and I knew I was going to paint on top of it so and then I'm just using my spatulas um that I have oh, I only have these two so I was struggling because I couldn't find the one that I I really the couple that I really wanted to use and I was like where did all my spatulas go <laughs> So I don't know what happened to my art specialists, but apparently they just disappeared. And um, so I was struggling a little bit with shaping of the leaves of how I wanted them and this and that. But I just did what I, you know, I just kept doing and I was having fun. And and so I just used the palette knife to help like kind of splay it out. So the reference photo that I was looking at um, of this plant that a chameleon was on um, was really cool and it it had like multiple you know colors and it had some like yellows with the, some different tones of greens and um, and some like pinky red tones kind of matched the fuchsia tips of his hands so originally in my mind what I thought is I was just making a base I was gonna tint my pastes and then like add layers of different uh, paint to them and I ended up not doing that I ended up just kind of enjoying how it was and just adding some primary element mallard green to give it depth and in, in the crevices to create you know the shadow and depth and tone of the green that I wanted um, I don't actually have many uh, paints acrylic paint so what I did have I um, you know, I just grabbed the basics. I just had those two greens to choose from. So that's what I used. And then I, um, I didn't want, with the primary elements, they're all full mica. So I didn't want the plant like <laughs> super, super sparkly. <laughs> um, I didn't mind a little bit to try to get in the crevices, but I didn't want it to be like all obnoxious of a plant to be like all glittery looking. That would kind of be odd. So I had a ton of cool shades to choose from to make an acrylic paint using my primary elements, but I, I couldn't uh, do all this and that because then it would have just been a bunch, a ton of shimmer because they're 100% natural mica and they're gorgeous. But for the plant, that just would have been really off. <laughs> so with what I was going for and doing on this piece. And so again, it's like this really cool texture when it dries. It's like this paper fibrous. I'm just showing you right after I finish putting it on so it's not dry at all. But, um, and it does darken a little bit. Um, 
Because that was one of the things I was like, I wonder if it's going to get darker as it dries or, you know, because this was the first time of me actually tinting it before I put it down. Usually I put it down white, you know, just out of the jar, so... But it, it, it did get a little darker, but not, not super, so when it dried. But it does have that paper feel. Uh, it does literally feel like fibrous. It's pretty trippy. And um, and so when I used the primary element I of the Mallard Green, I just used a water brush and, 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 and took out some of the... Um, primary element on my hand and just painted it in so right now I'm using um, Prussian blue and Payne's gray mixture um, just to outline uh, the outer part of the chameleon I just wanted to give him a little bit more of a pop from the background um, a little bit of a shadow type of thing and then I do that I end up doing it around the leaves as well just to try to get underneath and create a you know like a little bit of more of a 3d even more so separate segregation from the chameleon and the plant because it is 3d but you know in person I'm sure and closer up you can see it but the far away thing I wanted people to notice the separation um, so I just use the acrylic ink and and added you know, outlined it and, and around and outlined it around and the plant, which was a bit challenging because of all the texture <laughs> that was overflowed and stuff that um, I created from it, like the, the spikiness of it. It's really cool. <laughs> it's really neat in person. I don't think you really see that maybe as well. And um, I do have the true video. I take it outside so you can see that for sure. Um, a little bit clearer, but it is hard and, you know, it's catching and I got to make sure that the ink doesn't stain when I don't want it to. <laughs> so it was a bit of a challenge, but it was cool. I got to take a picture of the mallard green. So I just wrote it right there on the screen. So that way, and you'll know that the color goes uh, the primary elements are part of color art is my discount code that you can use to get 20% off all color art products and that's where you can get the primary elements I'm speaking of. They do resin art is the name for resin uh, pigments, acrylic pigments are the primary elements and then the watercolor uh, pigments are um, H2O twinkling I believe is what it's called so universal. And it's a really good product. And it's just out in the sunlight, so you can definitely see a lot more of the texture. Um, it was so bright out, too. It was, like, so blinding. But it's really hard to see the reflectiveness of that gold, which is kind of crazy. But it's not so overpowering that it's obnoxious to everything else. Um, I'm a silver kind of gal, personally, so or white gold or rose gold. <laughs> But like, you know, like I said, the yellow tones, you know, even a champagne gold, I'm, 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 I'm a partial to depending on the tone, the warmth of it, but, but like the yellow gold. So this gold, I, I really thought was amazing. I was like, wow, I really liked it. So I just wish it could show up a little bit better <laughs> the way it does. But I thought for sure in the sun it would, but I think it's just so bright that it's, I don't know, it's just hard to pick up. So thank you for subscribing and watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And hit the notification bell for any upcoming videos. Happy already and God bless.